A good way to start these problems is to draw yourself a picture of what you think the velocity selector might look like. So here I've drawn my electron and I've labeled it with a negative sign moving to the right with a velocity v. And I've started by drawing in the parallel plates that are creating the electric field. So I arbitrarily chose the top to be positive and the bottom of those plates to be negative so that my electric field, which always points from positive to negative, are the green arrows downwards. Now, of course, that's going to create an electric force acting on our electron. Now, because it's an electron, the force will oppose the direction of the electric field. It's going to be repelled from the negative side and attracted towards the positive side. So let's label this electric force in now. So we see that we have an electric force acting upwards on that electron. So in order for it to cross through the velocity selector undeflected, we need to balance that force with a magnetic force that's downwards. So we'll label that now, but then that'll allow us to choose which way the magnetic field lines must be going using our right-hand rule. Now, a little trick for you. One thing about the right-hand rule is it works only for positive charges. We've seen that if we have a negative charge like an electron, we simply reverse our answer. So what I like to do, and I know this is another thing to memorize, but it works well, is for positive charges, I use my right-hand rule. And for negative charges, I would just switch and use my left hand. That way I don't have to flip anything, and I just use whatever the orientation of my hand is directly. So let's summarize. So let's orientate our hand using our left-hand rule. My thumb points in the direction of the velocity, so it will be pointed towards the right. The palm of my hand has to face down to create a magnetic force down, so that means my fingers will be going into the page. So my magnetic field lines will be into the page. We'll draw those in blue. Now let's look at answering the question. They give us the electric and magnetic fields and asks us to determine what the velocity that the electron must have to go undeflected. Well, you can see right from the diagram what our condition for being undeflected is. The electric force has to equal the magnetic force. So let's go ahead and solve this now. Okay, our condition is simply that the two forces have to balance our electric force has to equal the magnetic force. We know our equation for the magnetic force is QVB. And we know our equation for the electric force is simply the magnitude of the electric field times the magnitude of the charge. And we see right away that the charge does not matter. They cancel off on either side. And that allows us to solve for V directly. So our velocity will be given by E over B which is 6 times 10 to the 3 over 0 0.0030 and we get a value as follows. Another thing to check is the value of your velocity. In physics, the fastest we can go is the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8th. So if you get, ever get an answer that's faster than the speed of light, you can assume you've done something wrong and you should go back and check your work. Now let's look at the second part of this question. What would happen if the electric field were suddenly shut off? If I remove those parallel plates and hence removed all my little green vector lines pointing downwards. Let's look at that effect now. If I remove the parallel plates, everything that's green in this diagram will vanish. And what are we left with? Let's have a look. So we see that my electric field completely vanishes, leaving behind only my magnetic field. So we only have a magnetic force, and we know that if we have a charged object moving with a velocity v in a magnetic field, it will experience circular motion. So now we have to redo our solution. So let's have a look at how this is going to look with our circular motion equation. 
Now by now we know that the net force in this question is provided by our magnetic force and it's going to create circular motion because no matter how I orientate my hand as it deflects around the velocity and the force will always be at right angles to each other and therefore create a circular path. So F net we're going to write as MAC and FB of course is QVB. Now it wants to know the radius of the path. We now know the velocity from the previous question. Let's write that down. So if we write our circular motion equation as mv squared over r, the only thing that's left is to determine what the radius of that circle is. So mv squared over r is qvb, and we again we can do a little bit of canceling, one of the v's on this side with one of the v's on that side, and resolve this equation for r. Let's do that now. So the only thing left is to plug in our numbers. And we see that we know the value of v, it's 0 0.003 teslas. We know the velocity, 2.0 times 10 to the sixth. The only thing left is to look up the values for m and q for an electron. And any formula sheet will give you those values. Let's write those values at the top. So all that's left is to plug in our values and solve. 